this college football picks week 13 edition of the sports gambling podcast is presented by win bet. Win bet is now live in Colorado, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Tennessee, Virginia, and Arizona for boosted parlays the in game odds on every major sport. Win bet has what you need to win. Sign up today to receive a $1,000 risk free sports bet. Download the win bet app now or visit WYNNbet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by Better Fantasy. Better Fantasy is a new free to play app that lets you sync your fantasy football league and bet on the head to head matchups. Download the app today or just head to betterfantasy.com slash SGPN. That's betterfantasy.com slash SGPN. We're also brought to you by SoBet. Sign up today to bet against your friends and join the social betting revolution at SoBet.io. That's SoBet.io. We're also brought to you by PropSwap. America's marketplace to buy and sell sports bets. Check out the new propswap.com and use promo code SGP on your first deposit to receive up to $500 in bonus cash. We're also brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is DFS simplified. Head over to prizepicks.com and use promo code SGP for a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. And of course, don't forget to download the SGPN app, your home for all of our free picks and podcasts. Welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking that money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Look how good we look over here. You guys look great. Well, Colby, Colby the- still has the the screen uh, paleness going uh, who, on. Who are we kidding? <laughs> Joining us as always in studio, Colby Dan, aka the Dan to base. What a week in college football. Gonna start off with a fire tout session. Let's hear it. Kramer nine and four against the spread. Hit his lock and dog. Uh, Colby eight and five against the spread. Hit his lock and bonus lock. And uh, yours truly eleven and two against the spread. Somehow I didn't hit my lock there, Uh, but I did hit my dog tease and bonus lock. Let's fucking go. You're welcome, America. Kramer still at the lock percentage, sixty-seven percent. My <laughs> bonus locks are seventy percent. You know, it's interesting when I get the freedom to choose the games I want to bet on. Somehow, <laughs> somehow my percentage skyrockets. Not going to throw anyone uh, under the bus. And then Colby still well above, uh, you know, fifty percent. We're all above fifty percent. Fifty-five percent. That's against winning. the spread. That is uh, that is the definition of professional gambler. Oh man, uh, college football! It's it's going to be a great week for college football too. We got it's just a great week for football. Period. So much football on Thursday with the <laughs> NFL. Then we also have the Egg Bowl, bunch of Friday games. It is uh, it's a good time to be alive, Colby. It is a great time to be alive. I mean, look, I, I know you're mostly focused on the USFL now, but as a college football fan or former college football fan, you got to be excited. FDS playoffs happening, a real playoff with 24 teams. Did you we? Know? Did we? Get what about their? Uh, what about their exams? It'll never work. <laughs> how how do they figure that out? The Division one schools must not have enough resources. The irony is the kids playing in FCS are actually probably way smarter on average and actually yeah. going to have to use their degrees. <laughs> I'm, tur- turns out college isn't that hard when you're an athlete anyway. So yeah, go figure it out. Do we want to <laughs> give Colby a minute for the USFL? We haven't put the poll out. I, had, no one's reached out to me saying they want the USFL gambling podcast. Oh, Have coming. they reached out to you, Sean? No, no. no. Well, if trust you, me, they're out there. No, they said George Mason doesn't deserve a football program and no USFL content. So that's the only you, feedback. Trying to get me fired up on Thanksgiving week. If right? you it's want just... Colby to uh, preview the USFL uh, in in the form of the USFL gambling podcast, you got to let me or Sean know. Yes. Cause we, you know, at the end of the day, I know Colby's excited for it, but I, I need someone else to be excited. Well, trust me. And look, uh, there's going to be a lot of, uh, there's already a lot of like XFL or, or CFL or, or USFL podcasts out there, but 
You don't have Pick Dundee. All right? wait, you don't have Pick Dundee. There's doing already it. a lot of other USFL podcasts. Sean, football works in this country, all right? Year round, <laughs> no, it, I it will you're, work. You're talking to a guy who loves football. But I, I'm surprised that there's a lot of other USFL podcasts. <laughs> uh, you're right, the USFL podcast, the USFL show. Jesus, what are they? What have they been talking I'm, about? I'm they just announced you. the teams. And look, uh, USFL. You know, you got a rich history. Jim Kelly, Doug Flutie. There I mean, go. you can go on look and what, on. Look Doug look Williams, what, Super Bowl champ. Uh, Reggie White, yeah. Herschel Walker. I mean, you can go on and on and on about how many great players have been. Mm-hmm. There. And, and you look at the NFL right now. You Again, see well, Colby, what, PJ if, Walker undefeated if, as an NFL starter. If you aren't close to failure or failed already, Colby <laughs> hates what? you. So <laughs> USFL, you failed once. Colby loves you. Let's go. Football Let's, works year round. Look again. Let us know if you want to hear more about the USFL. Let's do it. Now I want to hear about the USFL. I also want to hear about college football. Hopefully you want to hear about the best place to get down on all your college football, college basketball, NBA, NHL, whatever you want to bet on. Win bet has you covered a name, you know, a name you can trust. And even better than that, up to a $1,000 risk-free bet. It's free. It's it's risk-free. I, I, come on Thursday, Thanksgiving, Thursday, fire up that win betting app. You got three NFL games, a couple of college games, parlay those, get a nice sweet parlay boost courtesy of win. Oh man. They really have it all highly recommend downloading the win bet app. Just go to W Y N and B E T.com bet big win bigger with win bet L F G. Oh man, there was a yeah, touting was off the charts, and uh, we are getting to do this week's edition of Real Men of Dgens. This is a uh, it's a listener submission. Shout oh. out to Cody Zeeb, he's a big uh, Huskers fan, big uh, big uh, supporter of the podcast. He's all over uh, the Slack channel. Good guy, a lot of good uh, good picks, good angles. He sent me no this. Uh, you know, it, again, th- this one is, I don't want to hype it up too much, but this is really uh, a pretty good uh, nominee for real men of DGENs. Of course, real men of DGENs presented by PropSwap.com, where America goes to buy and sell real sports bets. Use that promo code SGP and double up your first deposit. Here we go for this installment of real men of DGENs. SGPN presents. Real men of DGEN. Real men of DGEN. We salute you. Milton A. Munson Jr. He's a uh, former Hastings, Nebraska resident. Milton Andrew Munson Jr., 73, passed away Tuesday, November 16th in Grand Island. Memorial services will be held 1 p.m. Wednesday. Burial with Hastings Military Honor Guard will be at Parkview Cemetery in Hastings. And here it is. In lieu of flowers, please place an irresponsibly large wager on Nebraska beating Iowa. <laughs> Private condolences may be sent to the family. So we <laughs> salute you. Thank you for your service, Milton, first off, and thank you for being a true man of DJ. <laughs> Don't that waste so your money awesome. on me. <laughs> Go make a couple bucks. Yeah, I don't or want lose any, a couple. I don't bucks. want any flowers. That is really great. I got to. Hmm. Yeah, I got to figure out when I plan on dying, what time of the year, and what kind of future bets I want to get involved in. Recommending, I it would be pretty funny if it was just like, all right, uh, I got a lock dog and tease. I want everyone to follow. Also got a couple of part like you had just like a really long list of different things he wanted people to gamble. Well, on. so just you know, not to pull the curtain back to, but you know, creating a trust, you can you can essentially leave whatever instructions you want. Oh, awesome. I've already because I was you know I'm you know in the crypto like how do I make sure that we, mm. so it made me you know this made me think like maybe there's a parlay I leave behind maybe maybe there's a future <laughs> some sort of future situation yes to my to my wife and family <laughs> all I I you know, hopefully I don't croak before my uh, Nick Sirianni. Uh, coach of the year ticket. But uh, if I do, my wife, feel free to hang on to that and frame it once, uh, once we get the cash as well, it's truly a good idea. And I like the way that they, they just, it's like, it's like when you, you, you ask people to give donations, uh, you know, for in your name or whatever, for something, 
I, I it's just the complete opposite of that. And it's so much better. <laughs> like go, go enjoy a burn for a weekend or, 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 or three hours. Let's go. It is great. Cause then while you're watching that game, you're thinking about uh, Mr. Months in the entire time. Well, Whereas if you buy just buy yeah. some flowers, you know. and his name is Munson. Munson, that's it's great. great. I mean, shout out to Roy Munson. Oh, uh, all, we need to honor him. Thought you were going Thurman, DJ. but Roy Munson's yeah. a great DJ. <laughs> Honestly, this should be. If there was an award, or if there was a Mount Rushmore, it would be Mount Munson. Yes, yes. In, yes. in honor of the great, maybe the greatest degenerate <laughs> character in the history of movies, all timer. <laughs> and uh, speaking of that, we just uh, got a movie channel going on in <laughs> Slack, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Slack. Uh, guys are always up to some uh, fun conversation. A lot of good angles too, crypto. Uh, and obviously picks. <laughs> Crypto seems to find its way uh, into every I'm, I'm still excited for the God's Eye uh, Oscar viewing when we oh. put when we oh, put all, yeah. all nine Rockies on all, all the TVs at the same time. <laughs> we have our we we do need to have our own Oscars <laughs> and uh, just nominate <laughs> stuff we like. All right, let's get to the games. Crack it open the Colby six pack. Cincinnati Bearcats head to East Carolina, Greenville, North Carolina. That is a Cincinnati. The Bearcats lane fourteen. Minus six hundred fifty-eight on the total. Colby, I know you say there's no chance Cincinnati gets into the college football playoff, and I agree with you. But tell that to those Bearcats. Tell that to those kids. They're hanging on Showed to a prayer. They're hanging on to a dream, and they're putting it on people as they close out the season. Give me the Bearcats minus fourteen. I know this is. Uh, you're going to say something about the Pirates sprinkling on the money line. Why should people take ECU? Because you look at their schedule, and this team should be eleven and one. You look at their other losses: South Carolina by three in a game they severely outgained South Carolina. They lost uh, to UCF by four, and they lost in overtime to Houston. They've won every other game. Now I'm in a, I'm in a pickle here because there's rumblings that Virginia Tech is going to try to hire East Carolina's head coach Mike Houston. Ooh. So if we win, I could see Virginia Tech going for him. If we lose, we get Houston back next year, and we're pretty loaded. But come on, give me the pirates on the money line. You know what goes into G Vegas and gets the win, all right? <laughs> no one calls it G Vegas. Yes, they do. Oh, that's, yeah, crazy. that's an ECU reference that's for, for a, the people uh, out there. For the for the couple ECU fans that <laughs> listen to the show. Uh sorry, not sorry. This place uh, is gonna be so lit. We haven't had a top ten matchup since two thousand eight when we took down West Virginia. I identified the look ahead spot last weekend. Navy almost got it done. What do we do with teams, Sean, after they play that triple option? We definitely Fade don't em. like to back them. They're banged up. They got their knees dove out a whole game. And like Sean said, as I pointed out last week in my handicap, Cincy has to get all gas, like all gas. Don't even no say breaks. the word. No, don't even say breaks. Cause it's gotta be all gas. Just like last week, they can still get there. There is still mayhem to be had. Alabama is vulnerable. And if there's nothing else, if if I am part of the Cincy program, I'm pointing that uh, that Alabama team that struggled to beat Arkansas. Maybe that's a stretch, but well, if, and they, I'm lose, saying, if they lose to Auburn, I think Cincinnati has a real. And shot. I'm saying if we no. keep the gas down, you know why Colby doesn't want Cincy to get in. Because then they'll get destroyed. Because then they'll have no one to be angry at. What are you talking about? <laughs> They're not going to really put them in there. They'll take eleven and one Oklahoma, or Oklahoma State over them. Are They've you a fan? Stated this. Let me ask you this: Are you a fan of college football? Yes. Or are you a fan of East Carolina? Because it seems like you're being selfish here with the six pack, yes. putting East Carolina first. It seems like you're being selfish with Sean and I, <laughs> trying to convince us with your heart again, and you confused me last week All with the I Kansas say, pick. I am and going how'd that Cincy. work out for you? Uh, how'd that work out? Leopold almost that was 28, 28 the in the is, fourth. Good, dude, Kansas yeah. played the well. variance that you create with your emotional ties with this office place and this goddamn <laughs> podcast makes it so difficult. I'm going back to my angle on Cincinnati. They're focused. They have to throttle teams. They have two opportunities left. Sorry, East Carolina, you're about to get your ass no, kicked. Yeah, and, and if if Michigan really looks bad this week, I mean, right now it the, 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 the predictions aren't out for week 13, but shouldn't Cincinnati be number five, not according to you, Colby, but according to the committee, no, but the committee dude, whoever, as long as Oklahoma or Oklahoma state has one loss, I, they play I, each I other believe twice, it's impossible. Probably. I believe it's impossible pretty much for Cincinnati to get in. Oh, here we go. Yeah. No, uh, I mean, based the, off of their, the, the way they value the games. Yes. 
I'll say this: Cincinnati's not going to be in there until the end if they're going to be in there. But look, all they have to do is play their games, see how it rolls. I think sh- I think there's enough chaos that can happen. I I don't think, you know, if I was setting a percentage, uh, it's, you know, if I could get uh, two fifty. Let me ask: What if Michigan if I could get wins plus- this week? Then they're putting two Big Ten teams in. They're going to put mm. two SEC teams in before Cincinnati. You're crazy. I, Look, I, I want Cincinnati to be in, but but if Alabama gets their ass kicked by Georgia, I, I mean, I I I, I want to see the conver- I want to see. I want to see what they do because I want to know if if Cincy <laughs> throttles their next two two games, they just they have nice they, nice they have, keep, they, they have to keep hope alive, and that's they're why not, they're going to look. Cincy you. might win the next two games, and maybe they blow. But why out do ECU. you want to take hope away from America here? Again, being selfish, Colby. Uh, all about ECU. I because, gotta know because there's another undefeated team I out there that know. America's uh, you, behind. UTSA, baby. You're goddamn Let's right. Go. Meep. All right. Meep. See, you did it. We spent way too much time talking about the East <laughs> Carolina Pirates. People are probably wondering what the fuck. The East right. Carolina is not even a state. Let me just let me just state this. When I look at Cincinnati's schedule at Bloomington. At South Bend, at Navy, none of these environments are are even close to Dowdy Ficklin. ECU wins on the money line. Washington State. I, it's funny how I'm the crazy Homer. I get the <laughs> label of being the crazy Homer. Kinda Washington are. State. Wazoo heads to Seattle. Washington for the Apple Cup. Washington State lane one total sitting at forty three and a half. I'm Team Wazoo here all the way. I mean, I, I know this is. Washington's chance to kind of uh, save their season in a way, or or at least kind of show up. Uh, it is it is a lost season for Washington, regardless. But I I kind of think they've quit. I mean, they lost to Colorado, that was pretty bad. And Washington State post Rolovich, they've been kind of feisty. Uh, destroyed Arizona. They look decent against Oregon. I think uh, they realize this is their year in the Apple Cup, and I I think they take it to Washington. I'm Colby? with you. I'm with you. Washington, uh, you know, they have like what five coaches are gone or something. I don't know. Um, and their offense, do I need to chart this? Because when you're going up against the run and shoot, I know Rolovich is gone, but they're still running that. They uh, Washington has the 110th best offense statistically in the country. That is one spot ahead, ahead of South Carolina, your boy Beamer. Um, but uh, they can't score. They can't move the ball. Cougs win in Seattle. Lay the point. So uh, the handicap, I think, part of the handicap here, rivalry game. Yeah. What do we know about Bob Gregory? Bob Gregory, of course, Sean. You know the interim coach up there because they got rid of Jimmy Lake. He he did go to school there. He played uh, linebacker and defensive back for the school. So wait a second. He played for Washington State. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> That's the handicap. I mean, you tell me, disgusting. Virginia Tech, Absolutely UVA. Disgusting. I got JC He's a Price on my side. Uh, g- bleeding, hokey, a uh, uh, maroon. But this guy, he's the other. He's on the other side. He's <laughs> that, not going to bring horrible. it all. He's not bleeding that is purple. Horrible. <laughs> what are we doing here? Let's. Where? I almost wanted a cowbell, but let's go Wazoo. Go Kooks. Go Kooks. Georgia Southern heads to Boone, North Carolina. Uh, square off against App State. App State laying 24 and a half. Georgia Southern plus 1200 money line dog. Massive spread here. This is an old time rivalry dating back to 1932. They didn't play for a number of years, but uh, that was the first installment of the game. App State kind of dominated as of late, seven and three in the last 10. Numbers pretty big, and you think, like, oh, rivalry grant game, they'll get up for it. It'll be close. There's actually been number of games where it kind of gets uh, <laughs> out of hand here. I I, I want to take Georgia Southern, but I, I don't know if they can hang with my boy uh, Bryce and app state Colby. What are you doing here? I'm on Georgia Southern. You don't have to look back that far. Uh, last year was an eight point game in, in Statesboro, but two years ago, app state went, they only lost one game all year. And that was at in Boone. Georgia Southern came there with a triple option on a Wednesday night, I, I believe. Say, this is just a big number for that. And yeah. and that this is another thing. The football gods are gonna want Georgia Southern because oh, here we they go. hired Clay Helton, so he's in, they're not gonna be running the triple option anymore. They've ran the triple option at Georgia Southern for like forty years, fifty years, I feel like. This is no longer going to be triple. This is the last triple Helton option there. appearance. Not yet. When does he you're sure he hasn't had no connection to the program yet? 
I mean, I, I, he's not coaching. Okay. Um, is he talking to people? Because that concerns me. I'm taking Georgia Southern plus the points. This is a rivalry game. Can't wait to watch this one. Get, triple option goes out with a bang. Pull, I mean, if you're pull, saying pull the whole the team is going to transfer because they're no longer going to be a triple option team, I love that side of the hand. How, how yeah, about this? App State's already clinched the Sun Bowl or the uh, Sun Belt Championship. So, yeah, so they, they, are, they don't need to even win this game. What do you mean they don't need to? They're playing it's a football, rivalry Colby. game. I know, but you know it's 2021. Give me Georgia Southern. The uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean I I'd like it even more if it was on the Friday. And the the Cincinnati and the Wazoo Apple Cup. That's those are on Friday. The, that was a, a Saturday game. Now we head to Laramie, Wyoming. Hawaii heads to Laramie, where Wyoming's laying ten. Uh, Hawaii is a plus three hundred dog. Total sitting at forty eight. Uh, I'm going. <laughs> What are you laughing at, Ryan? Just the 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 complete disrespect for the audience that Colby shows with this selection. <laughs> all the great people games. Are, this people week. are worrying about where Arizona, Arizona <laughs> State is. Great games this is, week. Is that a great game? Last year was seventy to three. Right. And then, and <laughs> it's true. Arizona <laughs> is pretty bad. And then we're picking a a team from the island going up to fucking Wyoming. I put this on there every year because <laughs> this is easy money. Doesn't Wyoming roll here? Yes. Like, Hawaii doesn't know shit about being in Laramie in the winter. It's cold. It's elevation. It's everything Hawaii doesn't want in a game minus 10 seems pretty reasonable. And Wyoming's been a, a decent team all year. I, uh, I was just on Hawaii's them. plus 300 yeah. money line uh, coming the other way. But yeah, I, I don't Hawaii. see, I don't see how Hawaii hangs around this game last year in Laramie 31 to seven Catch. got it done. Get, give me, if it's on the Island, I go with the, uh, the Islanders, but since it's in uh, come on, this is a no brainer. Lock it up. Wyoming minus Hawaii 10. Why are you getting uh, 70% of the tickets? I can't imagine who's really? betting this shit this early in the week, but wow, a lot of sharps <laughs> out there getting in on that early Hawaii <laughs> opener. They got to run to the window. <laughs> Hawaii is the number one sixteen defense. All right. 116th. Uh, that means Laramie, uh, what the Cowboys are just going to load up. They have two it, it, good running backs. So they're just going to load yeah, up. Just, it seems yeah. like they're just going to pound the rock, and and Hawaii's not going to be able to hang. And diving deeper into the numbers, Sean, uh, people just running to grab that uh, key number of ten and a half. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, we got Louisiana Monroe heading down to Lafayette, Louisiana, the square off against Louisiana Lafayette, the raging. Jesus. Cajuns, they're laying twenty-two. Monroe is a plus nine hundred money line dog. Uh, Warhawks, they're four and sixteen against the spread in their last twenty. Feels like it's just going to be a bloodbath for the raging Cajuns. But is there is there any any way Monroe gets up for this game? A hundred percent. I'm all over ULM. Louisiana is coming off that huge Liberty win. Yep. Uh, yeah, they, you're they've right. played a lot of close games and ULM. Okay. You, you look at years past they're They're just a disaster. When they brought in Terry Bowden and rich Rodriguez, this team last week, even at LSU, that 27, 14 scores, even deceiving there, they got down to the one yard line twice was uh, stopped at the one yard line. Um, they're going to, I, I think they're a live dog to win the game. Wow. Really? Yeah. I think they look, they did it. They beat Liberty earlier this year. Yeah. No, I, I like your angle of uh Faden, Louisiana Lafayette coming off that game. Although Louisiana Lafayette is pretty hot. What they've won eleven in a row. Yeah, I mean, they're a money team. I mean, the Napier's coaching for his job. You could use that whole angle. Well, he won yeah. the matchup last week where the loser was crossed off the Virginia Tech coaching search. Uh Hugh <laughs> Freeze no longer in contention in Blacksburg. I, I'm kinda with Colby again, and I think the the betting signals also point to lots of tickets coming in on the uh Billy Napier led Raging Cajuns and big bets coming in on the other side. So Yeah, I, I'm with you guys. Let's go ULM catching that massive number. Now we head down to Kentucky. Louise Louisville, Kentucky. Uh it's a Lu- basketball rivalry, Colby. <laughs> Louisville laying two and a half. It's the Papa Kentucky. John rivalry. Do you guys remember this? Yeah. Like, Wait, what where they, did he they, go? Kentucky? Got, no, th- so mm. it used to be Papa <laughs> John Stadium at Louisville. Yeah. And after that uh what conference call came out, he gets they they're they like canceled we're, we're changing yeah. the yeah, they canceled him and now then Shaq owns and, Papa John's. And then no, I, I, I he might still be the owner. I don't now know. But, Shaq. but then he's seen at the Kentucky basketball game, which is a huge deal, dressed up in all Kentucky blue. So he wow. definitely played both sale. sides. I mean, honestly, if you're Papa John's rebrand right now to Papa Shaq's, who loses? No one. Pizza what? Shack, the Pizza Shack, man. 
Get rid of the papa. Yeah. Shaq's hot You're chicken right. is Shaq legit is. food. I mean, a man that big ain't gonna put crap out. You know, he's pushing good product. <laughs> he is gonna push put crap out. Had a tremendous amount. I mean, could you imagine? Oh, oh, Jesus. He's our coworker. How dare you? Nothing but quality <laughs> Shaq speaks about. No, I'm I'm talking about like physically. No. Puts out probably a tremendous, <laughs> a tremendous amount. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, you're 400 pounds or whatever. It's a he correlation is. thing. If I'm 200 <laughs> pounds and he's 400 pounds. All right, let's get to the game. I'm assuming it's a linear correlation, of course. <laughs> uh, I'm going. I'm going Kentucky here. You know what they say: take the two and a half, don't lay the two and a half. I don't think you actually gave out the game or oh, the sorry. spread because we started making fun of Colby. Kentucky uh, <laughs> pl- playing Louisville at Louisville. Kentucky getting two and a half plus one twenty five on the money line. I like Kentucky here. I like getting a couple of points here. I, I just think simply Kentucky is the better team. I'm not that impressed with what I've seen out of Louisville. Not that Kentucky's been amazing, but. This feels like a good spot for them, Colby. Uh, yeah, the wrong team's favored. Yeah, Kentucky's a better angle. football team than Louisville. They can play ten times. Kentucky will win all ten of them, I think, this year. Um, Louisville, yeah, okay, they can move the ball a little bit offensively, but Kentucky's defense much better. Louisville's defense still a question mark, um, and I think uh, just they're just flat out the better team. They get it done. This is I, I, if I was setting this line, I would have done like Kentucky minus eight. And what's how many wins do they have? Uh, they have they have. Eight wins. That I I think there's something crazy that happens if he gets the ninth win too. Oh really? I think it kicks in a nut like a double extension or a double like whatever his normal like seven win raise and extension like one year raise and like small uh, or w- one year uh, extension small raise. I think if he gets the nine, it like double something crazy happens. So there's also the the con- contractual motivation. We brought it up. When, when taking the Kentucky over, I think yeah. preseason yeah. and shit, man. I mean, especially in this kind of rivalry game where if you're Mark Stoops, you already have a job forever, right? You're a basketball school, low pressure. You're in the sec, but you get to nine wins and, and yeah. it, turn some heads in a year where the, the, you know, the basketball program is no, question, they'll, be, they'll be good. Question they'll be marks. good. Give it time. But yeah, I mean, I, of course we're, we're going to take Kentucky in, in this uh, basketball game. Kentucky plus two and a half in the uh, what are they Rupp Arena? That's Kansas. <laughs> no, you're right. Oh, I was right. Okay. Better fantasy. That's right. Looking to take your uh, fantasy football to the next level. Imagine a tool that sets lines, spreads, money lines, prop bets for your fantasy football league. Well, you don't have to imagine anymore. It's here. It's real. All you got to do is head over to betterfantasy.com, B E T T O R fantasy.com slash S G P N B E T T O R fantasy.com slash S G P N free to play. And it's, it just adds another level. So fun uh, to be able to see betting spreads for your fantasy football teams, right? I mean, we, we covered our spread and our matchup by a tremendous margin, put up 170 points in our East fantasy league. It's been uh, all gravy. And it, again, it's free to play, but you have ways of uh, cashing out with some sweet gift cards. Uh, if you want to kick it towards charity again, it's, it's a lot of fun. And uh, besides the fantasy stuff, they have free to play prop betting and uh, prop contests as well. Highly recommend checking out betterfantasy.com, betterfantasy.com slash S G P N. Ole Miss heads to Stark Vegas, Mississippi State. This is the Egg Bowl, going to be on Thanksgiving night. Will be uh, the the timing of this is pretty sweet. It's four thirty West Coast time, right before the late NFL game. Got to have a two screen experience for your Thanksgiving. Man, I really want to take Mississippi State, and I probably will end up taking Mississippi State. But I am I am a little bit worried about Mississippi State being able to slow down Matt Corral. Are we giving? We're, we're, sorry to interrupt, Coley, but are we giving God's eye Thanksgiving off, or will God's eye be watching the Egg Bowl? Uh, I think we have to just leave the TV on and, and have that watch. <laughs> Maybe the home even alone, though we won't yeah, be in the office. on one TV as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, this is what do you mean? I I think the play here is a hundred percent Mississippi State. Uh, with, Who's got the number? You say, oh, okay. Ole Miss has got the fifth best offense in the nation. Well, coming on strong is Mississippi yeah. State, number one in the country in passing yards per game. 
And you think like, oh, well, it's just Leach in the air raid. They're just piling up sets, but it's not like, you know, it's not like they're not trying to do the exact same thing over there at Ole Miss. Well, and uh, well, you have the twenty first best offense in the country, Mississippi State, and that's been climbing up the SEC. the charts. Now on defense, guess who's happened to be twenty first as well, Mississippi yeah. State. Where yeah, Ole Mississippi Miss State's defense, I think, is would surprise people if they actually looked at the numbers and saw they're actually having a pretty decent Will, year. Will Arnett's a damn good defensive coordinator. Runs that Rocky Long defense. Ole Miss charting at number a hundred, and that's after playing Vanderbilt. Colby, so, I mean, just remind the people because you said that you rattled this off in the office the other day, and it was pretty impressive. But rattle off some of Leach's defensive coordinators of late. Oh, uh, you're seeing it, at Dave Aranda. Dave Aranda. Who's I mean, again, Baylor. just like, and not the kind of guy. Like, I don't, I don't know how he recruits, but like the kind of guy that coaches up. And I think one of the interesting things about Mississippi State is it seems to be the preferred school for Mississippi kids. And Mississippi is yeah. a decent, just like Louisiana, right? Like LSU is able to corner that Louisiana market. And you know, the one thing that Leach didn't have uh, up in Washington was athletes just showing up to play defense. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, I Alex think, Grinch, another one who's doing a great job with yeah. Oklahoma's defense. Um, and no. there is something to playing defense when the whole point of your team is to score a lot of points. And so it's a different defensive mentality. So obviously Leach has identified something from these guys. And uh, uh, last thing I'll say is, you know, classic kind of close spread betting signals. Everyone's coming in. All the small bits coming in on Ole Miss. Ole so Miss the, is a gimmick bi- team too. The bigger bets coming in on team. Mississippi yeah. State, Sean. I think the sharps like us will be on uh, the Bulldogs, uh, Hale State. Yeah, and it's in Starkville. So even if you just look at the stats there, uh, the only thing concerning, if I was making a case for Mississippi State, is their kicker. Their kicker sucks. So maybe that could burn game. them, but I think Mississippi State and, wins and the this. Whole, yeah. And the home field. Well, and, and I mean, Lane Kiffin's like looking for a job. I and mean, you I, feel this like is job interview season. Yeah, <laughs> and you feel like if anyone could get in, inside the head of a Lane Kiffin, it would be a Mike Leach. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, because La- yeah, I mean Lane. This is Lane plays chess with a lot of people, but when he shows up to play chess and Mike Leach has the Connect Four, he's just fucking confused. <laughs> and that's what Leach is going to do. I mean, again, the video of Leach dancing in the locker room, I, it's strange as fuck because it's like he's grandpa, but the team likes him. He, he's learning Spanish on the <laughs> sideline in practice, but the team likes him clearly. And, you know, honestly, they like him because his offense is fucking working. And that offense is only going to get better uh, Watch with out Will next Rogers year too. because he ain't going anywhere. Yeah. Ohio State heads to Ann Arbor, Michigan. Michigan, an eight point home dog. Dog. I mean, as much as I'd like to get cute here and and say like, oh, maybe Ohio State uh, trips up, dude, they're a fucking juggernaut. It's gonna be Ohio State and Georgia in the national championship. They're, I mean, they're really putting it. I mean, they put it on Michigan State. I don't see why they're not gonna be able to put it on Michigan. Maybe they look past him, but at minus eight, I, look past I just him to who? No, I know, and and, <laughs> and Stroud's making a making a push for Heisman, so they have every reason to get up for this game to put it on Harbaugh, and Harbaugh doesn't beat Ohio State. Last week was the look ahead, right? Yeah. Like Ohio State, Michigan's the big rivalry, not yeah, Michigan, not Michigan State, State, and they fucking destroyed Michigan State. Yeah, Michigan State, though, I I don't think they are a top twenty five team at the no. end of the day. They got and, a fortunate the schedule. Um, they were hurt too. They were hurt too. Yeah. Um, but I look, I wanted to take Michigan for years. I did this for years. I took Michigan because I was like, this is the year Harbaugh does it. Do I believe this is Michigan's best quarterback they've had under Harbaugh? I do. However, I just can't take a team. However. You need to have explosiveness. I, I don't think they're explosive enough to, 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 to hang with Ohio state. Give me Ohio state minus eight. Uh, yeah, I mean the argument would be the Michigan defense is going to be a little bit different. The D line, exactly. The D line is really good. Yeah. And we saw Stroud early in the year, kind of like when things weren't perfect, he struggled. And now they've gotten a lot better, but I, I would worry that they've looked really good against not much resistance lately. I hope I'm even wrong. this Michigan <laughs> passing offense that isn't much of a passing offense lit up Michigan State. Well, that's because Michigan State was an outlier, man. We all knew this. I went through on the college experience. We went through game by game when, when Indiana's who's, who's one of the worst offenses, in the nation has more than a hundred yards of offense than Michigan state and Michigan state gets the win. It, it's been there. The whole, the whole, we, we, there were the 130th pass defense by a wide margin. They were, they were very, I mean, Michigan state was very fraudulent, but that yeah. aside, this number still feels low for what we're seeing out of Ohio state. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I do. I think Michigan's probably the better team than Michigan state, even though 
We saw Michigan State beat them on the field. Yes, I think Michigan, if they played ten times, I thought the refs screwed them in that game. Yeah, I mean it was a, it was a rivalry game. Things get wonky, but I don't see the wonkiness here for this Ohio State team that again feels like a, a step above, and they're going to be motivated to cover this spread and cover it in a big way. Well, th- that's the one angle I, I was going to bring up. Because I, I, are they? Because they're in now. Like they just need to win. It's right. only eight points. I but mean, I, I, I get your I, angle. I think the Stroud Heisman thing and sticking it to well, you see to Harbaugh. But go back to that Wilton Spate team. I think it was in, in, if memory serves me correct, 2015. Uh, Michigan was the better team, and they should have won that game. They fumble at the one yard line. Uh, on uh, Wilton Spate fumbles that. Then that questionable first down spot. Michigan should have won at that game. This I actually think this Michigan team is better than that old Michigan team. We'll see if they get it done here. I hope I'm wrong. Give me Ohio State minus eight, though. It just seems that if they could make sure that they get all their receivers' yards and catches last week, like that was an orchestrated ask. Like they didn't even have. They tried to get everyone involved, which means they weren't just playing football. They're gonna roll here. Fuck Harbaugh. Fuck Harbaugh. (laughs) Oregon State. Oregon. Uh, the civil conflict, uh, or is it is a conflict now instead of war? No, Oregon's cool with war. <laughs> just don't play. Just don't play kindergarten cop. Wait, wow. what, what's that a reference? <laughs> Oregon to? doesn't like kindergarten. No, cop. it was like the city of Portland was was saying oh, that you, can't, you can't play kindergarten cop. It shows police in a positive light. Uh, Fucking there, like Love someone Arnold. sitting there Portland's, thinking. Uh, Portland's pretty hilarious. <laughs> that's also a great movie. So shout out to Kindergarten Cop. <laughs> Oregon State catching seven, coming off their big win against Arizona State, as I dog. predicted. Outright dog. Well done, winner. Sean. Thank you. Now Oregon coming off an ass kicking in Utah. I think we were all on uh, the Utes there. I didn't think it was going to be like that, but is this? A, you know, really, it's just like, is this a bounce back spot for Oregon? The number is seven. Oregon State's plus two fifteen. Colby, I feel like you're going to take Oregon State here. <laughs> I am okay. Uh, I mean, I think Oregon might get the win, but I think you you play you <laughs> you, you got to take Jonathan Smith. I think he's just so much better X's and O's uh, uh, as a head coach than Mario Cristobal. You look at Mario Cristobal last last. Uh, I mean, I I forecasted this thing on the the morning show for the College Football Experience. I said, you know, fucking or, genius, dude. Cr- well, I said Cristobal is always terrible with special teams. Uh, what happens? They block a kick early on. They they kick the ball out of bounds. Um, then they give up a punt return for a touchdown, the final play of the half. And as much as Oregon's extremely talented, and I'm sure they're going to, this place will be rocking. I, I just think they can cover the seven. I don't think Oregon is that great of a team. And Anthony Brown is a big question mark still. So g- give me the beeves to, uh, to cover the seven. I, d- I didn't do the work here, Colby, but if the winner, winner goes to the Pac 12 championship. So if Washington State wins and it's a three-way tie, they're not. They don't. No. Yeah. Well, then I don't know with the tie. I don't know with the tie because they lost if to Washington Oregon. State. Wins. Each conference is different on this shit. So, so if Washington State wins, they would be, and Oregon State wins, there would be a three-way tie yeah. at six and three. I, I'm assuming it comes down to like divisional. Right. I'll I'll try to look it up while we're talking here. But that that's an interesting angle uh, to me. Look, uh, uh, dream crusher. Sean brings this up often. Oregon's dream, in ways, were was crushed because hmm. they're they're out of the playoff now. That's true. And you got to wonder how and they're going to respond. Cristobal might go to Miami. And Cristobal is yeah. being spoken about as all a right, coach. I'll go dog. That I, doesn't seem to want. Well, I don't know why you wouldn't want to be at the home of Nike with all unlimited resources. The, the, the most classic thing. Sick my, ass jerseys. I hope Miami hires Cristobal because it's like the same exact thing as Manny Diaz. I, that, I mean, they're not. It's like the same exact thing. That it's a guy that can recruit that can't yeah, coach. That, that, that it just seems like a. Who knows if they get rid of it anyway? But yeah, I, I'm gonna lay the points here. Actually, I, 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 uh, I don't have a good. Wait, ex- you're laying the. Points? I don't have a good explanation for it because everything. I thought my, you just made a, a my instinct an impassioned saying, speech about the Dream Crusher game. My instinct <laughs> state take Oregon State, but I, I don't think so. you know. Yeah, give me the dog. Give me the dog. <laughs> All right, Oregon State plus it, it seven. Just, it, it's not going to make sense. I'm, I'm probably going to stay away from betting. It's this. not going to make sense, but I, I doesn't Oregon play Utah again and beat the shit out of Utah, and everyone's confused. Like, isn't sure. that how this Pac-12 sure. season? Is? Like, yeah, that's Colby. We got the Iron Bowl. <laughs> Alabama laying nineteen and a half in Auburn. Auburn a plus seven fifty dog. Uh, Kramer and I, being sharp guys that we were, all over uh, SC. And uh, you know, taking down Auburn there, but 
<laughs> I got lucky. That but, was... but is 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 Bo Nix out for the season? I forget. What's yeah. the latest with it? Yeah. Okay. So they got they got TJ Finley, the LSU transfer. Uh, well, Auburn moved the ball last week. They moved the ball. They just couldn't make field goals. They couldn't convert fourth down and ones. They got in the red zone like a shit ton of times. They Seems were like a good recipe yeah. for the for the Alabama game. Uh, I do love how Auburn, uh, you know, fired miles on for going six and five and they're currently six and five and, and playing Alabama. So they're most likely going to be six and six. Um, but uh, no, give me the points. Uh, Bama's defense has been kind of dog shit. And I also think uh, Bama's O line has been kind of shaky this year. So South Carolina is bad, right? Like I know you're yeah. going to, you're saying they're, they're unlucky. They're the 111th offense in the nation, South Carolina. But don't we have to be a little concerned that maybe Bo Nix did matter and maybe this new coach isn't all that good? But, but I, I would say this is. I know it was a look ahead spot. No, but I, I. Auburn season's done and Alabama really has trouble covering big numbers <laughs> against crappy teams. They just do. I, whatever it is, their defense lets down. Uh, if you've been like laying all these big numbers with Alabama, you're getting cooked. I uh, Auburn has a massive home dog. I love it uh, at, at 19 and a half it feels, feels too high just because they're going to, you know, they'll get 17 points. And I, I think they'll won't really feel like a game ever, but I I think the spread is going to be fairly easy for them. South Carolina was outgained and also went one for nine on third downs last year, last week and one. Hilarious. I think I think Bo Nix maybe matters, and I think this is going to be a blowout. I'm laying, I, I'm laying the points with Alabama again. I I, I don't I don't disagree that Bo Nix matters. I just think that's factored into the number here at nineteen and a half. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you're right. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I just where'd the coach come from? Like Boise? Yeah. How long? How long? I mean, this team is falling apart, and I feel like if you're Auburn, like if he doesn't show up for this game, like maybe it's not a hot seat, but it's like, dude, this isn't. You're coming to the SEC now. You know, like shit. Shit matters a little bit more now, and, and this. I don't know. I, I watched him play Penn State, and they were a fun team. And Bo Nix made them a team that could win games because of his shenanigans. But no, thank you. You guys are crazy. Ryan, you hear that? Ryan calling me out, calling me out, saying I'm crazy. You've all you've all had that friend thinks crazy. What you like? Alabama minus nineteen and a half. Auburn plus nineteen and a half. That's the way to go. What if? Now, just hypothetically, what if there was an app that lets you headle, that lets you settle these disputes mano e mano? Well, thankfully there is. It's called SoBet. All you got to do is head over to sobet.io, create an account and see for yourself. It's a, a fully functioning free to play app and uh it's pretty awesome. Basically, you can come up with any sort of like crazy Custom bets you want. Go head to head with your buddies on SoBet. See who is the best gambler, who can come up with the craziest hashtag Dejans only parlays and sorts. Uh, I mean, again, that's what SoBet's all about. Back to the roots of gambling. You versus the guy across the table. In this case, Ryan. All you got to do, head over to SoBet.io to get started today. S O B E T dot I O and join the social betting revolution. Home stretch here with the picks. Oklahoma squares off against Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State laying three and a half. Whew, man. This is uh, in Stillwater. Colby, what's the lean here? It's the same exact thing as the uh, Ohio State Michigan game. Uh, look. I get it. Oklahoma State's got the third best defense in the country, and they're unbelievable the past five weeks. But they just can't get over the hump here. I remember just what a few years ago. First off, they got blown out in the past. When's the last two. time they beat them? Well, no, they missed an extra point to to send the game into overtime in eighteen. So it, it, they haven't beat them since two thousand fourteen. Mm. And I'm getting three and a half. Sign me up for <laughs> Oklahoma all day. Like it's it's pretty much exactly like Ohio State, Michigan. It's like yeah, until you guys prove it. I, too many years I've gone against those and I've, I've eaten shit. So give me a, uh, give me the Sooners plus three and a half. Don't they also, aren't they both locked into playing for the championship too? No, because Texas, uh, if, if Baylor 
because Baylor, so Baylor can, still, can squeak in. Yeah, I believe so. Okay, right. Each conference has these different things. And the Big Ten West is Baylor crazy gets too. in if Oklahoma loses to Oklahoma State, right? If, so if Oklahoma yes. wins, they play Oklahoma. So Oklahoma has to win to guarantee that they get in. Yeah, I mean, I, yes. I'm kind of I'm <laughs> Oklahoma I'm, State's locked in already. And they already don't do well with Bedlam. Thank you for participating. Yes. In oh, sorry, I hit the wrong uh, thing. I'm kind of, uh, I was just giving database some sound effects here as he crunched the numbers. I, I just don't understand why this is three and a half. Why do they need people to take Oklahoma? I mean, Oklahoma is a pretty public team, good record, decent record against the spread, shows up in these kind of games. Why are they giving us that extra half point, Ryan? That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> Because of what Colby said, because what? of the perception of the defense and the perception of how good they've been and the perception yeah. of Oklahoma not being quite what they've been, I think that's all it is. Yeah, I mean, I'm taking Oklahoma plus three and a half. I I, I think this, you, I think this will end up being a good game. You worry though about the the exiting the Big Twelve angle because well, people are getting up for it. it. And we did I'm say it. it. Gundy yeah. and his mullet is going to be most pissed uh, off. You got to wonder what Gundy's telling his team it's about true. that. I like that angle. Because if they lose and if Baylor wins, Oklahoma doesn't even play. Wouldn't that be hilarious? So that, they go that, to the SEC and and Texas has a 4 and 8 record or you know 5 and 7 and and yeah, Oklahoma's neither. not even playing for the for the Big 12 championship. So oh but but that and that that's the concerning thing is Oklahoma State doesn't like they can eliminate Oklahoma to, to not play them again. I guess maybe that's the yeah. motivation. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly because oh, I think that, I think there's a strong chance if you watch Texas Tech this past week. Uh, I think there's a strong chance Baylor wins that game. It's also in Waco. Yeah, but it, Oklahoma State's defense looked pretty good. I I think I'm with Sean though. I think you just got to stay on the side of history. Of uh, Oklahoma's gonna <laughs> beat Oklahoma State real quick. Pac-12 the tiebreaker note: If Washington State wins. And Oregon State wins. Washington State will represent the Pac-12 North. Wouldn't that be compelling after Hell their yeah. crazy football Wazoo. season? Yeah. So something to root for if you're a Wazoo fan. Go. Cruise. And then look, I'm, that's another thing. This this college football week. I mean, the the, the Big Twelve, the Big Ten West is wild. ACC Atlantic is wild on these crazy yeah. scenarios. Lots of teams yeah. have a chance. UTSA undefeated Roadrunners head down to. Uh, what the fuck is this? You know, I have my glasses. Denton, Texas. Denton, Texas. <laughs> Square off against North Texas. UTSA land ten and a half. North Texas at plus three forty money line dog. Can you cue some music? What oh. kind of music do you want? Championship music. No, there you go. Because UTSA, if they win this and they beat either Florida Atlantic or Marshall. They are one win away from a national championship, Sean. Wow. Let's go Who's road runners. Give it to them. They, they give it to them themselves. The college experience, the college football experience will give them a national we, championship. We should do that as a press release. Yes, the, the sports gambling podcast will deem you national UTSA championship. say the national champions. Uh, the dance a bit. It's an accredited r- ranking. Uh, I'm sure everyone will respect that. Uh, they're the road runners. Uh, first I'm going, of all. I'm going North Texas here though. I, I they're I fighting for a bowl. They got something. Dude, if they win. They make a bowl. They're scrappy. They're going to get up for this game. Uh, they're at home. I, I love a home dog here in UTSA to your point, Colby. I think there is a lot of pressure of an undefeated season. It's easy to slip up. 10 and a half is enough for me to be interested in North Texas here. Yeah, but uh, you know they they've they've played close. I I like I like taking the the side of this UTSA team, understanding they got to take care of business here. Uh, I'm sure they 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 know they don't have a chance, but they also know that going undefeated is not something you get to do all the time. Utah still claims that championship from Urban Meyer days. There's, so there's a lot of national champions out there. There's no, I mean, we live in 2021. <laughs> you can do whatever the fuck you want. And no one checks anyway. So UTSA is playing for a national championship. I like the angle, Kobe. I'm laying the points. Give me the road runners. Kobe, you didn't make it official though. Are you on UTSA yeah. even with the big number? Yeah, I am. I think I think they realize the moment. I think they realize the moment they get it done. Lay 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 the points there, despite North Texas playing pretty good ball this year. Clemson heads down to Columbia, South Carolina, square off against the Gamecocks. Gamecocks, eleven and a half point home dog. Clemson lane 11 and a half. They destroyed wake 
everyone's uh too cute underdog pick, which uh man, uh, Cl- Wake really was alive in that game and just Fuck. fucked it away. Dude, their tackling was so bad. Fuck. Very really- very sloppy, very yeah. out of sorts. I mean, this one's tough for me because I want to bet against both these teams. One Clemson I still think isn't that good, and then two South Carolina coming off that win, which they probably shouldn't have won that game. Uh, so I would have liked to fade them here. I have to pick one of these teams. I'm going to go South Carolina catching the big number 11 and a half. I, I just don't think Clemson's offense. I, I know the, they beat wake by a big number, but if you watch that game, there was a lot of outlier stuff that happened. I, I think it's going to be tough to go on the road and, and put up enough points to cover this number. But unless you think about the fact that Clemson has nothing else to play for. And that's a motivating factor. No, they can still make the ACC championship. <laughs> They're not making the playoff. <laughs> okay. And that's what they started with. So they got to take care of their rival. And as bad as Clemson's offense is, what if I told you that it was uh, 16 spots ahead of South Carolina's offense? I, I'm on Clemson. Well, I, Clemson's got a great defense. That's the matchup. Yeah. Clemson Clemson's defense is going to show up. And Colby, you mentioned it. Auburn was moving the ball a bit. There's going to be opportunities for Clemson's to do some stuff. And I think the difference in this game comes down to Clemson's defense, doing something to South Carolina's offense to, uh, you know, little, little floppy. You, you got to love the, the drama here though. You got Beamer. Could he be mentioned for a Virginia tech job? If no. he gets this win, who knows? I mean, this is a big opportunity for them. I'm seeing USFL talk uh, all throughout this chat. So I'm very happy to see oh, that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I think <laughs> I'm laying the points with Clemson. It's a gro- gross, Colby, gross, gross, gross. You, you co-sign and you're on Clemson Lane. Unfortunately, I, look, hard to see South Carolina scoring yeah. more than 14 points. It's yeah. all they'll need. Yeah, I, there's gonna be a pick 14. six. There's gonna be a pick six yeah, in this game. That's kind of where I'm at, Colby. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's do it. Let's close it out strong with the Happy <laughs> Lock, Dog, and Tease presented by Prize Picks. DFS simplified. All you gotta do, pick over under. On uh, whatever players they got you covered for college football, college basketball DFS, NFL, NBA DFS is heating up, and uh, it's just awesome. It's very easy. You do a, a three-player entry, you can turn twenty into one hundred dollars. You go three and zero, or you can do the uh, two for one option, the round robin, turn twenty into forty-five. Very easy, very simple, legal in a ton of states. Head over to prizepicks.com, promo code SGP, get that 100% deposit bonus when you use the promo code SGP. And shout out to Prize Picks for grinding the, the college basketball stuff. Oh, that is impressive. <laughs> and I, I've noticed recently they they uh, you, you might miss it if you're an NFL guy, but they pulled out some uh, some defense and special team stuff into its own category. So if you want to do some tackle props, uh, you know, have at it. <laughs> All right. Kramer, you're up first. What do you got? Lock dog, tease, and bonus lock. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, we highlighted the motivational angle as, uh, throughout the podcast, but Washington is a, is just a dead fade team right mm-hmm. now. So let's go Cougs to start for the second one. Ohio State's just better than everyone else, just like Georgia. That's going to be the final. That's going to be the championship game. Uh, so let's lock up minus eight. Sorry, I'm going a little bit out of order uh, for the dog. Oklahoma as a plus one fifty dog in Bedlam just yeah. seems like taking candy from a baby. I, I, I mean, again, like there are there are kids listening to this show uh, as young as uh, nine years old who have never seen Oklahoma lose to Oklahoma State. So free money. Let's <laughs> tease it. Wyoming down to minus four. Delicious spot there. Uh, let's move the Kentucky number up to eight and a half. Key crossing lot, and That's then uh, yeah, Ohio State minus two. Yes, please. What could go wrong? All right, my lock. I'm with you. Ohio State minus eight hmm. is just Double too lock. too tempting not to get on that for the lock for my dog. Oh man, kind of like uh, I'm thinking Oregon State. It's hard not to take Kramer's uh, Oklahoma. You know what? I'll go. It's a small dog, but still, you're getting still plus 125. Give me Kentucky plus 125 for my T's. Oklahoma up to nine and a half. That should be money. Ohio State down to minus two. And for the last leg of the T's, yeah, Wyoming minus four. That's, uh, you know, Wyoming minus four. And I'm putting in Wyoming 
minus 10 for the bonus lock. That's just such a good situational <laughs> spot for the Laramie Cowboys. All right, Colby, what do you got? Lock up uh Wazoo minus one. Wow. Washington just doesn't have the the offense. Fuck. A lot uh, of crossover this week. Fuck. Playing with fire guys. Oh, I was gonna do this one too, but look, as a dog, I'll do it. Plus nine hundred ULM on the money line. Plus nine hundred. Get your plus one fifty bullshit. ULM out of here, right? uh, plus nine hundred. <laughs> you know what? And, and That's actually, an amazing. sorry. Apologies. I did. I do like Wyoming minus ten, but no. I forgot my bonus lock. In honor of the great Mr. Munson, give me Nebraska plus one and a half against Iowa. Yeah. When someone sends you a, a sports pick beyond the grave, you yeah. got it. You got to take and, that. And let's pause to talk about that for a second. Shout out to uh, Justin in the YouTube chat. He's going to be tailgating at that game, Iowa, Nebraska, oh, repping awesome. the SGPN gear. So if anyone's at that game, Hit him up on Slack. He'll have some SGPN yeah. lighters as well. This guy's a legend. Uh, so yeah, we're on location. Let's go. AKA Justin's on location. So yeah, hit him up. And I think we all should just honor. Like, do we? Oh, yeah. We all need to pour one out and take that bet. Might Definitely. have to take some company money on that one. Uh, ULM plus nine hundred is your dog, Colby. What about your tees? Uh, what, real quick, XFL Jim chiming in that uh, Adrian Martinez not starting. By the way, so. doesn't matter. <laughs> Tell that to Mr. Munson. XFL Jim also pointing out that he may also be tailgating. So yeah, there and I, I wouldn't bet it now. I would. It, <laughs> it's Nebraska plus one and a half. I'd wait a little bit. I think it'll get up to three. Mm. <laughs> All right, tease wise, we are doing. Uh, Let's let's take Wyoming down to four. Yeah. Oh, we all we all saw that value. Let's take ULM up to twenty eight. Oh, and Kentucky <laughs> up to eight and a half. All right, let's go. You didn't want to take Georgia Southern up to 30 and a half. I like that too, but <laughs> there's too much out there. I like it all. All right. Uh, bonus. Yes. South Florida against UCF. South Florida's getting 19. Give me the bulls in South Florida. They're going to cover that South Florida. How much are they laying? No, they're catching 19 at oh. UCF. Oh, at UCF. Yeah. Okay. USF catching 19 against you. C F. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast. Make sure you subscribe to the college football experience and the college yeah. basketball experience too. <laughs> two separate feeds. Don't worry, Kobe. I'm a pro. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and we got and the USFL experience. USFL yeah. that has not been greenlit yet. We Turn have to his wait. Mic off. We have to wait till the fans uh, demand it. Uh, obviously, appreciate you guys leaving ratings and reviews for your chance to win. Free gear every Monday, aka Merch Monday. I just tweeted out the winner uh, of Merch Monday. So if you recently left a review, maybe it's you. Go check us out on Twitter at Gambling Podcast. Subscribe to the YouTube. The YouTube chat is becoming a, a sweet destination and a hang. Make sure you turn your uh, alerts on so whenever we go live, you get that sweet, sweet notification so you know it's time to roll. Smash that bell. Smash that bell. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean. Second, the Money Green, and he is Ryan. Sean, quick aside Virginia Tech, meta, meta, meta. JC Price went out there. He knew to keep Manny Diaz coaching Florida, they had to lose that game. There's no fucking way they lose the UVA, though. Take it on the money line. Kramer, <laughs> let it ride.